Hey folks, it's Tom, the Frugal Prepper. I got this uh, heater here. This is the Maxi Heat. Okay. This your kind of typical electric heater. A couple of big heating elements in there and a fan that blows across them. The heating elements still work fine, but the the fan has just died. The motor is all messed up and the bushing in the fan. I had this apart a couple times trying to fix it, and I was kind of thinking about throwing it away. I figured, you know, sometimes you just can't fight planned obsolescence. And they just designed these things so that they fail at a certain point, so you have to buy new ones. But I got to looking, and I have this little personal fan right here, and I actually have another one I found when I was cleaning my garage, so I'm willing to sacrifice this. But this little motor in here is exactly the same motor that is in this fan. Now the problem I have is this one you can see it, it kinda that it pushes through a rubber bushing in the middle and it's kinda pressure fitted on there. Now these blades are maybe just a little smaller um, than the blades that are in here and there's only two of them in there and I'll show you when I get it open. But these this moves pretty good air. So I think if I can mount this in the same place that that motor that's in there in and just use these blades because the rubber bushing on this one is dried out and cracked and gone bad um, and the motors all messed up and a part of the motor actually like the mounting spot like the cast aluminum little thingy broke off um, I think maybe I can make this heater work again and since it is like negative 11 well no I, I take it back we, we had a little bit of a heat wave it went to negative 10 so right now it's holding at negative 10, but it's supposed to get down like negative 12, negative 14 tonight. And then we got some like 30 mile an hour wind gusts that make it really cold. So this is the kind of weather I went out to get some firewood and even with gloves, three trips of firewood was all I could do before my feet and hands were numb. So, uh, I'm going to take this apart, and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. I'll do some, I can't really videotape it and do it, but I'll show you as I get it apart. <laughs> okay, so here I have removed this uh, top cover. It had these little star-headed uh, screws on it. So I got my star bit out, I took those out. And now you see inside here is the all of the wiring which we don't really want to mess with or care about but then here is the main heater unit and it's got these screws the hold these screws hold both the grate and the heater unit in and then there's two at the bottom that are just in the heater unit itself and then mounted on the back of this is the fan unit so I am going to take that out now okay so now I've taken those uh, six screws out I have removed this great um, piece and now if you look in here you'll see these are your resistive heating elements um, of course it goes without saying don't try something like this with it plugged in okay um, and there is that motor and the fan that is busted so now I'm going to take that off and then we'll take that fan apart and get the motor out of it and see if they'll interchange. Alright, so here is the original fan unit out of the uh, heater that's bad. Um, and you can see here too from where I've taken it apart before I busted off this plastic uh, bracket right here. Um, here is the the um, other fan unit. It's the same dimensions it looks like. Kind of the same plastic bracket system here. Very similar. Now the blade on this is smaller in diameter. However, I can tell you that that fan seemed to move more air than this thing ever did. Um, and I don't think I can really change the... This has a big press fit rubber bushing in the middle 
that's all dried and worn out and slips over the shaft and this one's still good but it's got two screws that go into the rubber bushing so the rubber bushing design is a little different um, it's not as big where it would press fit into that other fan and since this one even though it's smaller it's got four blades and it seems to move a lot of air um, because, you know, it was designed as a fan, you know, uh, for, like, cooling. So, I'm just going to go ahead and say, yes, this is smaller, but I'm going to use it. And I think it's going to blow enough air across those coils that it'll be okay. We'll see what happens. So, I'm going to try to swap these out, and I'll be back. Okay, so I got the motor mounted on this bracket, the new motor. Um, one of the things was that this shaft was shorter. Let me show you. This shaft here from the fan motor was shorter than the shaft that was in the original motor. So I switched shafts. And then um, I had problems where it was just like uh, the back of it was rubbing up against the bracket. And there's a little plastic bushing in these that looks like this. And this is worn down and the lips worn off of it over time. Which is probably what caused that motor to start dragging and burn out. So that little nylon bushing, that is part of your planned obsolescence. Uh, there's a great uh, documentary on, on YouTube. Look up the... Uh, I think it's called the light bulb story. I might post a link down to it below about planned obsolescence. But basically they intentionally don't design things. They design things to fail. Um, because people need to buy new things. And they could design stuff to last forever. But they wouldn't make much money. Uh, when they originally designed pantyhose. They were basically indestructible. You could tow cars with nylon pantyhose. Um, and DuPont... You know, almost put the pond out of business because all the investors were like, we're pulling out. And so they had to go back and redesign nylon pantyhose so that they were weaker and they would run. That's why when you hear about the old uh, ballistic uh, nylon ballistic vests, you think like, well, pantyhose is made out of nylon, right? You can't stop a bullet with that. Well, with the real nylon, you can. With the stuff that they came out with for pantyhose so that they would still tear and run and wouldn't last very long. Uh, no, you couldn't. But uh, just, you know. Anyway, the other shaft, this original shorter shaft, had a good bushing in it. So I removed that bushing and put it on the longer shaft. And it's spaced right now. So I have hooked it up back to the fan casing with some wire nuts here. Just because I wanted to turn it on and make sure that it worked and it blew air in the right direction. And it does, it's blowing at me, which is what it should do. It blows plenty fast. Oh, <laughs> it's fun to do one handed. Try not to kill myself. Try not to kill myself. Okay, there we go. So now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is hook this up and put it in the heater. It's moving plenty of air. I think that's going to be fine. Um, so we'll put this back in the heater and see what happens. And I'll keep you updated. All right, folks, so I got it all back in there. Got the grate back on and the cover back on. Basically, just put all the screws back in. I have plugged it in. And you're going to see this as I see it for the first time. We're going to see if it smokes, catches on fire, burns down the house. Let's see what happens. So there's the fan. And that all seems good. We'll kick it up here. It's got a 1300 watt setting. There's the 1300 watt setting. It's making heat. It's making good heat. Smells a little bit, but I think that's because I was spraying uh, WD 40 in there before trying to get the old motor going again. It's burning that off. But it's definitely cranking out some heat. I don't know how much I got on this 
circuit right now. We might blow the circuit breaker. Let's kick it to 1500. I'll let dim the light a little bit. Ooh, that's really making some heat. Yeah, it's really blowing it out good. It's nice and warm. That's a nice. I always love this heater. It seems to make good heat. Much better than those ceramic things. I don't know. They don't seem to make as much heat. Okay, so. Uh oh. It says caution. I have a caution light. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, now I just got power. Huh. Maybe I'm not blowing enough air through there. Although it certainly felt like I was. Hmm. Well, I have to troubleshoot that and see what's going to happen. Okay, folks. So the problem here is that... Uh, that fan is not moving enough air and there is a sensor right here that if this gets too hot this clicks open and then you have to unplug it and wait uh, for a few minutes and then it'll reset and you can try it again now I put the old fan blade on that motor and tried it again and it worked okay Except after about five minutes, it just starts gripping the shaft and starts spinning, and it, the fan doesn't really turn very much. So that bushing won't kind of fit into that older fan blade from the newer fan blade, so I'm going to have to MacGyver something up. Um, so it's getting late, so for now I'm going to set this project to the side, but I think what I'm going to actually end up doing is taking that old blade and hammering that center part flat to where I can drill two holes in it to put the two screws through to that new bushing off of the newer blade and get that on the shaft and, and working right. Um, so for now this is on hold but I have not given up. Um, I will make this thing live again. <laughs> Um, I guess I, I also consider just trying to like rivet the two blades from the old fan onto the new fan blade and take off the other two. But then I said, you know, then if it's out of balance. And so I think I'm just going to try to repair that bushing and make it fit on the old blade. And then it'll secure to that shaft. You know, what happened to the good old days when they just put a little uh, flat spot on the shaft and you had a little set screw that tightened up to it and locked it in there yeah. no it was a good idea to put a piece of rubber bushing in there right again it's planned obsolescence folks so this project's going on hold i'm going to bed because i have to work tomorrow and um i'm gonna throw a couple big logs in the stove and uh fill up the kerosene heater and uh try to stay warm this is Tom, your frugal prepper. Hi right, folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So I have worked on the heater here and I have MacGyvered the fan, uh, the old fan in there. And I'll show you how I did that in a minute. And it's been running here for a good, like, uh, I don't know, five, ten minutes. And no problems. Now when I first put the new fan in there, I ran it, it did the same thing. It shut down and this caution light came on. And then I started playing with it, and I noticed like I would jiggle it, and then the power would kick on and caution would come back on, you know. And um, then I noticed every time it would kick off, it's after I ran it for a minute and gave it a jiggle. And boom, the caution would come on. So I'm going to kick this over to fan here and let the, uh, let the heating elements cool down, and then I'll kind of show you... I'm going to take it back apart because I just have like one little screw here and there to hold it, the cover on for a moment while I test it. Then I'm going to take it back apart. I'll show you how I rigged up the fan, which I think I did not even need to do, um, but it's done now. And I ended up using the middle of that old fan as a template, so I already broke the blades off of it. So it is what it is now, but it works good. Um, and then I'll show you what I found the actual problem was with that caution light tripping. 
So it's getting good and cool here now. I'll go ahead and take it apart and show you here in a minute. Okay, so here's what I basically did on this little part here. Um, I took this plastic piece off of that other blade. And I had, it's got two plastic divots here that have to come through two holes. So I drilled that. And basically I just took and snipped the corners of that part that was flared out and hammered it down flat. And uh, just with some pliers and a, a, I had a dead blow hammer here and a socket, you know, just whatever I had to and put it on 2 by 4 hammered it flat. Then I used the... Let me get it out here. I used that round part as a template to drill these four holes. And then I just went ahead and mounted this piece in here. And I was worried it might not be perfectly center or in balance, but it doesn't seem to rattle or vibrate or anything, so it must not be spinning fast enough to care. So it, that works. And then this bushing goes right on that shaft and pressure fits real nice and tight and it turns just fine so that got me past that little problem and I, I thought it would take a lot longer than it did but shoot it only took me about 10 minutes to do all that um, and so I put that back on and I ran it and like I said I started having the same issue so let me see if I can get this over here to show you the problem I found so like I showed you earlier in the video, this piece right here on top, see if I can get a better shot of it. It's got a little bimetal uh, piece in there so that like when that bimetal heats up, it opens it up and breaks contact. And then you have to wait for it to cool down to close that little circuit again. Um, and like I said, I was jiggling it and that's when that thing would trip and then it would kind of untrip and re-trip as I jiggled it too. And so you see that the power comes in one of these and out the other wire through that bimetal strip. Now, I don't know if there's heat in the bimetal strip or something, but what this does is this little piece bolts through here with a little nut. And it has a little metal tab right there in front. And there's another little metal tab underneath there that kind of goes up in it, but it just looks like it's all plastic. I don't know. But it was just loose. Like, this wasn't mounted, this screw was loose, and it was kind of jiggling around on there. So I basically took that all off, and I just, it had a little bit of dirt in the back of it, not much. I blew that all off real quick. I sprayed it down with some contact cleaner real good, and just tightened it back down on there real tight. And it hasn't had any problems since. So that, I guess this heater really had the two problems. One was the motor was burning out. But my guess is as the motor was burning out, it was always heating up, overheating, and tripping that caution thing because it wasn't turning fast enough. And maybe just all that heat and expansion and contraction loosened that bolt up. Um, but that seems to have done it. It seems to work fine now. It puts out good heat. So I think I should be able to get another five years out of this thing. And I don't have to go and spend money on a new heater. I just, uh, real quick, I'll just say, you know, sometimes prepping is really not about spending money and buying all the latest gear. It's about improvising. It's about taking what you have and being able to make something work out of it. And being able to get by when you can't go to the store and buy something new. So when you have something like this that breaks, take it apart, fiddle with it, see if you can figure it out and fix it and learn something and, um, you know, MacGyver something together. Anyway, that's all, folks. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.